Hello, me Bonnie Burns, and welcome to the episode eight of the Superhero Dog Owners Show. I'm joined today by a very special guest, Rosie Rue. Rosie is a, is a Cocker Spaniel. She is Sid's sister. I know some of you know that I own Barry the Bordeaux and Sydney Cocker. Um, well, Rosie is actually um, Sydney's uh, litter mate, yeah? She is his actual birth sister. And Rosie lives up in Northumberland with her, her mum and dad. And she comes to stay with me when it's a holidays. And she's here for holidays right now. I also, I'm obviously joined by my very good friend and co-host thought and never, producer. Thought you were going to forget about me there. <laughs> and general, you know, technical guru, uh, Alex, a video guy from Artifact Media. So thank you, Alex, for setting this up again. Pleasure. Um, today we have a, a really awesome interview for you that we, we, we recorded earlier this week. It's an interview with a, a good friend of mine called Amy Smith. She is a dog trainer from Dan Ander. And Amy is originally from, from England, but she moved to Australia and she uh, set up uh, Amy's Puppy Preschool. And she's also responsible for the Soundproof Puppy app, which is an awesome app. We're going to be talking a bit about that as well. But anyway, I won't rattle on anymore because I want to get straight into the interview so that you can learn lots of stuff from Amy. If you have a puppy, you need to stay tuned, get a pen and paper and make some notes because you're going to get lots of really interesting hints and tips that will help you have a much better relationship with your puppy. So roll the tape, Alex. So today's uh, guest is a dog trainer who originally from Aylesbury in the United Kingdom, but now she lives in Sydney, Australia. Uh, she owns and runs Amy's Puppy Preschool, and she is also the creator of the um, Soundproof Puppy app, which I'm a huge fan of, and I always recommend my, my puppy training clients use the app. Uh, so I'd like to give a big hello to Amy Smith. Hello, Amy. How are you going? Good, good, good. Thanks very much for taking the time out of your, out of your day to join us. I really, really appreciate it. No problems. Are you ready to dive straight in, Amy? We've got the Greyhound round first. That's a, a quick fire round where we, we like to get to know you a little bit better. So are you ready to sure. go off the leash? Ready. Brilliant. So first question, uh, who's your first, your favourite superhero? My favourite superhero would have to be Spider-Man. Ah, good choice. Good Mother choice. of three boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you prefer Indian or Chinese food? Indian. Good call, good call, you're doing well. Um, would you prefer to walk a pointer in the park or a beagle at the beach? Oh, beagle at the beach. <laughs> Is it the beagle or the beach that won you over there? Either or, probably <laughs> the beach. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite dog cartoon character? Oh my word, favorite dog cartoon character. Um... Gosh, all that can come to mind is Muttley. <laughs> He's a good one. He's a really good one. Yeah, that's a good call. And finally, red or white wine? Red. <laughs> hey, good one. Okay, I'm going to give you nine out of ten, Amy. I was very impressed with those answers today. Well done, well done. Um, <clears throat> so, Amy, like me, you, um, you didn't own a dog until you were in your 20s. Um, so what kind of compelled you to go from just not having a dog to having a dog to, you know, wanting to become a dog trainer? Sure. Um, a lifetime of love of animals. My parents never allowed me to have a dog and rightly so. Uh, we were a really busy family growing up. Um, lots of sport commitments. My parents worked. It, it never would have been an ideal situation. However, I pleaded for most of my life to get a dog. And it wasn't until I owned my own home and or I had one kid, I've got three boys, and um, I'd had one child and he was almost five or he was five and, and that was it. I, you know, my whinging went over to my husband and I won. <laughs> you won, well, yeah, yeah. You so, won him over much easier than there, your parents. you know, I sort of, I went off, I did all the standard stuff, you know, I went to puppy school, I, I, I learned about how to train him and, and I sort of went, I really like this. This is, this is good. I would like to do this one day. And, you know, it, one thing led to another and it, it wasn't long after that. And I, I had actually inquired with the puppy trainer I'd done classes with to find out how on earth it was that one became a dog trainer. So, yeah. Good story. Good story. That's it's interesting because a lot of people, you know, when you tell them what you do, you tell them that you work with dogs and stuff and and you, you can tell that they love dogs and they say, uh, similar to what you said, you know, they say, oh, I'd love to have a dog, but I, 
you know, I work or whatever, or, you know, we're too busy and stuff. And I always, I always say, hey, you're, you're doing the right thing. You know what I mean? It's, it's just a responsible thing to do, isn't it? Not to get a dog if you don't, mm. you know, if you don't, if you can't have the time or, you know, the, to, to commit to, to having a one. Definitely. Um, I had lots of other animals though. All right, cool. What like? Ah, well, I'll go from largest to smallest. <laughs> I've grown up with a horse my whole life. Um, so my love of riding came when I would come back and visit family in the UK and my auntie would always take me riding and so that was one battle I won here so I it's not like I was totally animal deprived I shouldn't make it sound like I grew up deprived um and then cats and pocket pets so rabbits and guinea pigs my whole life and I still have them even now at 36 (laughs) so very good what's it what's the best thing about um What's the best thing about working with dogs for you, about being a dog trainer? Uh, if I think selfishly, um, having being my own boss and working my own hours, um, that's a great aspect of it. But if I think of big picture wise, I, I just love helping people. Um, I love helping people start that journey with a new puppy and I think most people are very overwhelmed in that time and I love being able to provide the support and assistance to kind of get them through that because they're often, their minds are blown, you know. They are totally mind blown by some of the things that, you know, you and I can teach them and and it's really, it's so rewarding, I think. Is a, is a massive thing. That's a really rewarding thing to know that there are people out there that sing your praises every day about stuff that we find so simple. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. So. It's great when they take it on board and they do it, isn't it? And then, they, you know, then they're teaching their dog. It's fantastic. Yeah, totally. What do you, um, you know, it, you, you sort of touched on it there. It, it can be, it can blow you away a little bit when you first get a puppy or even a, a dog and it can be quite hard to be a dog owner sometimes. So mm. and it can be hard to be a dog trainer too, I guess. What's some of the worst, what's the worst moment you've ever had as a, as a dog trainer? Oh, just some, I, I, I don't know. There's probably not one I can put, I could say. Um, but, you know, th- there's definitely stories that come to mind where you can just see that people have made a really bad choice of breed or a bad choice of, you know, dog or, or something like that. And, the, the, you know, I find it really difficult when people give up on their dogs. I definitely am supportive of people that should have to, that, you know, they've, they've made a wrong decision, you know, and you, and you really need to rehome. But when they're quite unrealistic about why, what their reasons are for rehoming, um, I think that's, I think I find that very, I, I do find that very difficult because for me, if you take on an animal, you take on that pet, that is your responsibility until it takes its last breath at the end of its life. So I'd, I'd say that's, that's I'd yeah, that's probably the hard thing when that sort of stuff comes back because I only have them, I only have puppies. Um, I only do puppy classes. So, it, you know, early on I've, I've, I've definitely assisted people with, with early rehomes when they've made the wrong decision or they've had a family breakup or, you know, stuff that is is hard um but the ones that give up on their dog i I find them hard i find that hard yeah yeah you're you're right i think if if only a bit more time could have been given to the decision before they actually got the dog then you know it it probably could have been Mm. avoided couldn't it you know what i mean um that maybe it was never going to be the right fit so you mentioned that you you just work with puppies um what what were the sort of the top three things that you if someone's listening to this podcast now and they're, they're going to get a puppy at the weekend you know what what are the top three or four things that they need to that, that you would recommend that, that that they really should do with with, with their puppy to uh, ensure that they have a a really nice well-balanced dog mm. um get, get into get into training straight away because the second that puppy walks through the doors it's learning stuff whether it's good stuff or bad stuff so I think that if you have an arrival date for a puppy, um, you have to be booked in for classes that start very, very soon. Um, getting the puppy, look, I mean, I, I don't know what it's like over there, but here we're not, we don't battle so much with vets anymore, especially not where I am, on not taking puppies out to get them socialised. So I think that's a, a big thing is, 
for people to understand the risks or not risks of taking a puppy out and about and getting them socialised. Around here on the northern beaches where I live in Sydney, we really don't have a massive issue. You know, we probably haven't had a case of parvovirus around here for, I don't know, 30 years. Um, so, and, and that's a that's always a hard one to get across to people because everybody out there is a bit of an expert and everyone's always said, you know, don't take the dog out. So making sure that the puppy does get out and about and, and, and confident um, in the world and then number three or oh, I don't know just be prepared for it to not be easy because it's not easy it's it's never easy <laughs> so and I think I think most people are quite surprised at how much work it is to to bring a puppy into a family especially a family with children yeah I think no that's fantastic really fantastic advice I think people should be prepared for the work that they've got to do with it the more work you put in at the start, the easier it gets, doesn't it? You know, as, as time goes on. Yeah, and, definitely. And like you said, you know, for inoculating the puppy against life and getting him outdoors is getting him outdoors early as well, and, and seeing things is mm. uh, is really important too. Yeah. So awesome, awesome points, Amy. Thanks for that. Um, <clears throat> so, what are the most common problems that you that you see in your your puppy classes, or the, what what the people bring um... bring you to with? Sure. I, I would say lots of nipping and biting. I think that I get that as like, as, do you mean as in people's Yeah, issues? yeah, yeah. What are they, you know, yeah. what do they come and so say, oh, I can't stop them from doing and, this? Yeah, nipping and biting and mouthing of kids and things and, and, and not much of an understanding of how much, um, so I don't even use the word supervision, I use micromanagement, how much micromanagement it takes to have a young puppy around, especially around young kids. That would be the number one thing that I would say um, people, you know, contact me as an issue. Um, and how do you deal with that? What's a... Oh, you, I mean, it's just the constant support of them, isn't it? You know, make, explaining to them that they really need to have management set up at home so that when they aren't, you know, there with a puppy and kids, you know, they've, they've got the ability to have a puppy in a puppy pen or crate training or, you know, various things like that. So I think they get there in the end. Um, not all of them probably, but most of them. <laughs> most of them, yeah. Um, without sounding like I'm picking on my clients. Um <laughs> <laughs> what else? I, toilet training would be a challenging one here, which, you know, I think for, for you guys, like if you think about toilet training a puppy in winter, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> you know, I get people here in Australia complaining just about never take it's a cold off. to go outside at night. And I'm like, man, you should be doing it back in the UK. <laughs> so um, I think that's a tough one. And they get, and again, look, they get there in the end. The amount of my clients that start off going, oh, I don't want to crate train and then five weeks in, you know, they're still cleaning up poo and wee all over the bloody house and they go, do you think it's too late? And I go, it's never too late. <laughs> start crate training. You wish you'd done it from the start. So I'd say those are the two hardest things. And and then just managing and supervising kids and puppies, you know, um, that, yeah, that yeah, would awesome. be it and like well. you said, yeah, Like you said before, having a crate helps so much, doesn't it? You know, when you're not, oh. if you can put the puppy in the crate or a playpen with a Kong or a Chew or something like that, you know, when you're not able to supervise it, it it prevents him from doing what you said before, which was when you bring the puppy home, he's always learning good and bad stuff. So if you can stop it from learning the good, the bad stuff, then, you know, the job's twice mm. as easy, isn't it? And getting that sleep too, I find, especially with families with young kids, you get a lot of puppies that aren't getting enough sleep because they're just constantly being sort of played with and then they end up really wound up all the time. Um, so I think that's a big one as well. But parents get that when you sort of remind them what it was like when they're six-month-old baby never had a sleep and what those <laughs> days were like. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's an easy analogy for them. Definitely, yeah, definitely. So mm. now we're going to talk about the, um, you, because you created the Soundproof Puppy app, which, which I mentioned before, and it's a fantastic uh, tool resource that, that, that every puppy owner should, should, uh, should have on their phone or their iPad or something like that. Um, I, I use it all the time. I recommend it all the time. I know dog trainer friends who love it, dog training clients who love it. So very well done for, 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 for making that, you know, and I want to, if, if anybody does anything today who's thinking about getting a puppy, they should definitely go and download the, the Soundproof Puppy app now. How did that come mm -hmm. about? How did it come about? Um, I used to get, well, I still do. I get a lot of tradies, um, 
I don't know if you know what that means. Um, tradies here in Australia means like workmen, like plumbers and builders. Oh, okay, and, okay. Oh, yeah, so tra- yeah, yeah, tra- yeah, okay. So yeah. I get a lot of tradies through my puppy classes and they've always got their typical sort of, you know, Aussie working dog, whether it be a Kelpie or a cattle dog or a Staffy. Well, it's not working dog, but Staffy or whatever. And they want to, you know, they've got this big goal of having this dog that goes around on the back of the ute with them because that's really common here too, you know, driving around with the dog on the back of the ute. And I would always say to them, listen, you know, I I keep saying to you, I want you to take the puppy out and about, but you've got to remember that your work site is an unbelievably noisy place. So before you take your puppy there and terrify him of drop saws and nail guns and, you know, what I want you to do, and I used to say this to them all the time, I want you to get your phone, I want you to record some sounds at at your job site, bring them home, play them to the puppy while he's eating his dinner, and... That's going to help prepare him for what it's going to be like when he comes on site with you. And every time I would say it, I used to go, geez, that's a good idea for an application. <laughs> I, you know, I, I really should do that one day. And, I, I mean, I must have given away my idea that many times. But anyway, and then eventually I just sort of thought about it and I went, you know what, it, it, making getting puppy owners to do stuff like that is so hard. You know, we do our very best to get them to do everything right that we want them to do. But if imagine if they had this really easy tool to be able to kind of, you know, play get, sounds to the dog and start getting yeah. them comfortable with it. So I did it. I did it about three weeks after I had my third child because I had so much time. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah. very well. I'm, pl- I'm very pleased you did. I'm very pleased that you did. And... Uh, yeah, if, if, if people want to go to the iTunes store, is that the best place for them to get that, yeah? Yeah, I, iTunes and Google Play, so it's available for Android phones as well. But if you if you ever can't find it, um, type it into Google. Um, it's an iPhone app, but it will work on iPad as well. But you just have to make sure that you're searching for iPhone apps when you're looking for it because a lot of people search from iPad and can't find it. Awesome, awesome. Mm. Well... We're at the end of the interview now, Amy, so thank you very much for your time. My last question no is, when you're not, um, you know, helping people with puppies or being interviewed or creating apps, what, what, how does Amy Smith like to, like to chill out and relax? Oh, I don't know if I do. <laughs> I don't get a lot of downtime. Um, I'm a really busy person. I don't think I'd have it any other way. Um, I've got my three boys keep me on my toes big time. I do master's athletics. I'm a short sprinter as well. So that keeps me um, on my toes, so to speak, no pun intended. Um, And I heard a great quote the other day, which I loved, and I'm sure it's been around for a long time, but I had somebody say to me, you know, if you ever want something done, just ask a busy person. And look, I couldn't agree more because I am, I think if I slow down, um, I'll, I don't know. I don't really, yeah. I do get some downtime. I've got two kids in school, but I'm generally quite busy and I really wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, Good stuff. You sound happy anyway. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks very much for the time, Amy. Where can people go to find out more about you or or, or the app? You got a website you want to tell us about? Uh, Look, I think the best place to go is just social media. I'm really, really active on social media, as you know, Dom. Um, So you can look up the app on Facebook and and I've got a a great following on there and and I'm quite active on that page. And then also my Amy's Puppy Preschool page. And I've got a lot. I'm always sharing sort of tips and tricks and things like that. So um, I really enjoy, you know, sharing my work and making it available for as many people that are interested in it. We'll put that in there. We'll put that in the show notes as well so people can find that as well. But uh, yeah. Amy, I want to say thanks very much for your time this evening for you, this morning for me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, take care of yourself and we'll have you on again sometime. Awesome. Thanks, Dom. Thanks Thank you. so much. Bye-bye. See ya. So wasn't that awesome? Thank you very much to Amy Smith for that fantastic interview and for helping. You know, I always learn something whenever I speak to all these dog trainers. I'm very lucky to be friends with lots of dog trainers all over the world and I'm very grateful for them to give me some time for the podcast as well but I always I always like to ask questions that I think you know I I would want to know if I was if if I I was uh, somebody who had a puppy or whoever it is that I'm talking to so it's so it's I always pick up information I hope you guys are picking up information as well stuff that's going to help you have a bit more fun with your own dog if you are then you know the nice thing to do would be to head over to iTunes and to leave us a review 
because we want to get more reviews we want to spread the word we want to help more dog owners pet dog owners have more fun with their dogs yeah and, and everybody can be their dog superhero everybody can be that person that their dog follows around the park like the pied piper and little rosy roo is getting a bit warm now so we're going to go and give her a nice drink of water um that's a wrap for today's episode um in next week's episode I'm not sure what we're going to do, Alex. I think we're going to sit and talk some dogs more. We're going to talk a little bit about um, socialisation, actually. Whilst we're talking about puppies, and I think we'll have a little bit chat about socialisation, and I think where a lot of dog owners get it wrong with socialisation, they feel pressured into their dog. You know, they think their dog has to be every other dog's friend, and it doesn't really. So we're going to be talking a bit about that. So uh, that's a wrap for this week's episode. If, uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a review. And if we don't see you through the week, then we'll see you through the window. And thank you, Rosie.